Hello. All right, I've done some uh, adjustment. Uh, I didn't quite use the microphone entirely. I just kind of used it as a guideline. But listened back here, uh, back here, um, rather than right at the back. But I listened right back here and sort of uh, listened to the tone of the uh, low frequencies going through the... Uh, Going through from 25 up to 140 hertz. Um, might still take a little bit more juggling than kind of putting a, a PEQ filter between and widen the bandwidth and going well, going between say 20, 25 to, or let's just say for argument's sake, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, and so on. I'm looking at the, the intensity of the level as well as listening to the pressure of it and thinking ah oh, well that seems a little bit too bit bit too high uh, compared to the other frequencies that are a little bit more lower down and they need to be a little bit more precise uh, a little bit more you know the, to get a bit more uh, consistency between the level so uh, the level here that's a little way 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 more high because as I go up you know the frequency is going to elevate up at this angle and eventually it'll flatten and then it still continued to peak or somewhere and I just lower it down just so that um yeah just like a hearing test um even though <laughs> The levels have got to be amplified a little bit more because, you know, it's different with headphones because you know, I could wear headphones and walk around the room and the sound remains the same. <laughs> no no, no peaks, no dips, none of that. It just remains the same. Once it goes airborne in the room or airborne from a PA speaker outdoors, uh, everything changes and you got to, it's got to be adjusted and it and it's an artificial thing at the end of the day it's not like you know um um you know it's an artificial recording playing back over an artificial loudspeaker that's, that's you know say if we have a so if it was a car engine or something um it may it may take several speakers all, all kind of um, side by side, coupled together, um, and how the engine sound is recorded might need multitude microphones because it, it, it's not just going to have a sort of monoral sound like you t usually hear typically in bloody movies if someone's near an engine. And you just hear the bloody engine noise coming out of the bloody centre. Very little uh, sound over the left or right or even half phantom sounds. And uh, another sound over, you know, when you're very near. It's going to sound very, well, it's going to have reflection and peak and different arrivals of sound frequencies. And it's going to sound like stereo. Not like a typical what you hear in freaking movies, which I, I always find so damn annoying. You know, that Ford Ferrari movie. Ah, what a bloody overrated load of rubbish. Bloody sound editing and sound mixing for that. Um, I don't even watch that movie anymore because I just thought, oh, it was going to be the creme de la creme. One of these bullshit Atmos mixes again. Uh, and it turned out to be bullshit. Um, and then, yeah, then you got to put all the speakers like side by side and then get the sound pressure level. And so like, you know, because you measure the sound pressure level, you know, you can mix use all the test equipment and then you generally then going to play something that's going to um, to try and mimic <laughs> but it's still artificial at the end of the day um yeah so i've just been going through the tones um i might go for i have to go a little bit for a little bit more because you know um can't believe i use so many freaking frequency bands but believe me you know if, it, if they ain't adjusted, those some of those frequencies are just going to stand out all the time. Um, so, yeah. Um, if it were... If I was testing it through with headphones, 
um, and the microphone up close to the headphone and it's kind of sealed with a, one of those dummy heads no, nothing stupid just something cheap just something cheap and then um, you know use a, one of these Behringer microphones or use the uh, the microphone that capsule uh, that goes into it which I think I believe is a Panasonic uh, a type of well, or well, there is a type of Panasonic microphone. I got a few of them myself uh, for a, for a project a few years ago. But I might make a dummy head because um, they ain't spending eight grand or whatever the bloody is for that bloody Newman or whatever the stupid bloody thing is. Daylight robbery is what that bloody thing is. Daylight bloody robbery. Bloody snake oil. Just get a, micro, a microphone as a microphone for God Ryan out loud. And uh, as long as you know how to use an audio mixer and pan the pots and such, so you get a, you know, pan pot for the left, pan pot for the right. Uh, so you get stereo um, pickup sort of thing, if you're recording, that is. Um, and yeah. Anyway, yeah. So I might do something like that. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it. I would find it essential. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of things um, a little bit more paramount. This is just a, an entertainment. But I like to get the science of it a little bit more. Um, not audiophile. Because I ain't an audiophile by any degree whatsoever. Do I look like a freaking audiophile? I mean, look, look, look the way I bloody dress, huh? Do I look like a goddamn audiophile? Audiophile are, are snobs, rich people that live in rich bloody houses. They're audiophiles, me. I ain't. Never will be. Um, so my pursuit is just to sort of get the, um, you know, a consistency. That's going to be, uh, that's going to sound even. And then I have to go over and check it with, you know play the scene in a movie or something that's got stereo field sounding and play it over and over until I think, yeah, that's better than before. Because there's no way I'll be able to do it with the DCX. You just simply run out of PEQ, parametric EQ bands. There are only nine parametric EQ bands per channel. Here I can use up to about 20. But that may, that may not be even enough. And if push comes to shove, then okay. I might have to make a compromise in the rack because I'm thinking about removing these CP45s and replacing them with um, an SDU4, which is only going to take up one U frame. And then um, I can move the equipment down a little bit lower. And then, yeah, I could put in some because really. The PEQ that is the powerhouse for the uh, the, the frequency. Um, so I'm sure if I uh, if I tried uh, using an Odyssey and I wonder if you can hack an Odyssey and just rip out certain parts of the circuit board or the circuitry and put it into a different case and put several several of the same thing into a case and then resolder it, rewire, put XLRs on the outputs and all XLR inputs and outputs on it because it would cover uh, a wider frequency spectrum um, with ha the amount of filters that it has. And you could buy Onkyos and all that. There's so many of them on, on eBay and they're, they're they're cheap as fish and chips. You can get an uh, 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 Odyssey X, is it XTS or 32 or whatever that is. And then all I need that is have that in the rack sort of thing. Um, so many to do the low frequency and so many to do the high frequency for the HF horns. And then so many to run as... Um, full spectrum to, to do the uh, the surround channels um, and then for the subs of course and maybe the bass shakers because uh, even the bass shakers um, 
could need a, a, an adjustment uh, there where the microphone special um, placement of the microphones on the seat because once the bass shaker is attached to it and everything it becomes like um, a speaker it, it, it's all I can hear it audibly sometimes as well as feeling it so you can't lie and say these bass shakers are silent because that's bullshit <laughs> anyway I'm just going to play a bit of Moonraker so that's left channel that's right channel that's centre channel down there I haven't I haven't done the left centre right centre yet so that'll be the left centre right centre and it's in uh, that mode at the moment so it's not in the vibe screen when it's there it'll be in five screen and those are on mute and there they are up there so I haven't, I haven't EQ'd them yet, so I've just got to listen and see how it goes. I'm pretty familiar with the mix on this movie, so... And nearly all the movies I've got. I'm pretty familiar with all the uh, the, the mix and where all the panning. And I like the way this, this boat, you know, when the music cuts in... And then it's kind of moving, shifting from side to side. You can hear, I can hear the boat kind of going... <laughs> We're partly in the centre. I can hear it shifting side to side slightly, and all the uh, the mortar attacks, and then the walls are coming down, um, and then the boat panning over that way, and then the other boat going down centre stage, and it's kind of yeah there on that scene there. It's kind of going whoosh, whoosh, from side to side to side. I can hear that pope panning over, shifting over. <laughs> but most of that sound is partly in the center, so that needs to be adjusted. And then the torpedo firing. Going, and then... <laughs> wow. I could feel that. I could feel that in the um, the raised platform, uh, the lower the lower raised platform. Some of the bass bass mid upper bass bit uh, frequency. So, hmm. Oh, that. Oh, that would be a bass line. I I know what it, I know what it's like on a boat. I've been on a boat on a on a friend's boat on on when we were going out Pool Harbour and it was a bit choppy on the waves and he was flooring it just so he get through the uh, um, several uh, few hundred feet of uh, waves uh, coming in and then it will start mellowing out a little bit because it was just the uh, the current and uh, oh, oh wow. I tell you, it was the best sub bass I've ever felt. It make it makes THX sense around and well, Limax, IMAX doesn't even count. I tell you, it was a it was a ride, but it was scary. So it was a lot of slam and jolt and everything. And yeah, I know I know what exactly what it's that scene when that poke comes flying and then slamming onto the uh, onto the water. That is gonna be a heck of a jolt. Oh my goodness. But there are no choppy waves there. But I know what that that is gonna feel like. It'll probably make your stomach go up into your mouth. So taking the movie a little bit literal so what am I going to try and do um, I can't just in tune the system up so you know I'll have to make maybe a special alteration so it plays the movie or any other movie because usually sometimes um, you, you make alterations for a movie that's going to play in a cinema for say it's booked in for say for two months it's going to have a special uh, adjustment so it plays at the optimum. 